I know, Jesus says in verse 37, that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. What word is that? It's the word that he spoke out of his mouth. It's the word that he spoke to Moses and David and Samuel. It's the word that he spoke to all the apostles and prophets, okay, that they recorded in this scripture. And it's the word he speaks to us today in our spirit man that can be backed up with the scripture. Hallelujah. Okay? But if you don't know the scripture, you have, I mean, you, it's like you have just cut the foundation out from under yourself. Okay? You just cut it out from under yourself. You're walking in pride. You're walking in arrogance. I don't really need to read the Bible. I don't really need the scripture. You know? And if you do that, you're going to find out at the end that you were sorely mistaken. Okay? And the liars out there that tell you you don't need the Bible or the Bible is confusion or the Bible is this and that, always negative, always negative, always negative, always negative, talking about the Bible in a negative way because they say you just need to hear the voice, the voice, okay? See, that's what they always say, okay? Well, God speaks loudest right here in the Scripture to us. Hallelujah, okay? And then he's, and he puts it right here in the heart. And he registers it right here in the mind where you can understand what he expects of you. Hallelujah. And that's how we should be walking. Hallelujah. He told them his word had no place in them. See? They sought to kill him because his word had no place in them. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Okay? Then they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth. That's how we feel so. Paul said in Galatians, Have I become your enemy because I speak the truth to you, because I tell you the truth? And many people on YouTube have left this ministry and stopped watching the videos, stopped commenting on the videos because we speak the truth to you. Okay? And we're going to keep speaking the truth. And if you don't love the truth, that means you love unrighteousness. And if you love unrighteousness, God is sending you a strong delusion so that you will believe the lie. Okay? That you can make it in on your own and you can become God. Okay? And you're on your way to the lake of fire. And that's all there is to that. If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love him. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself. But he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Verse 44. Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer. See, here we go. A murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Now, Jesus right here in verse 44, he's linking murder, hatred, lying, okay, all together. It's all the work of Satan. And John is writing that right here in 1 John. See? You have to understand the book of 1 John and 2 John and 3 John and Revelation and the Gospel of John were the last books written in the Holy Scripture. Okay? And John wrote these books to bring people back to the main focus that is supposed to be in the mind and the heart of the church, the called out, the elect, the very elect, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ crucified and risen from the dead and seated at the right hand of the Father. And that's where we're to be abiding in Him. Hallelujah. 
See, because when we're abiding in Him, we're abiding in the vine. Let's go to John 15. John 15. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch of me that beareth not fruit, He taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, He purgeth it. Hallelujah. That it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. See? So, the word that Jesus spoke unto us, here, here's some of those words. See? Here, here's some of them right here. See that? Here, there's some of those words. Look. Look at that. John chapter 15. See? The Gospel of John. Hallelujah. Praise God. See? I am the true vine, and my Father is the, hus is the husbandman. See? Those are some of the words that he spoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you, you must keep your focus upon the Lord. You must love the Lord. Uh, verse 3 of John 15. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Hallelujah. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. So you can't bring no forth no fruit of the Spirit in the sect you abide in Him. Okay? And that's what John's speaking of here. Jesus is speaking, the Holy Spirit is speaking. And over here in chapter 3, once again, verse 8, excuse me, verse 9, Whosoever is born of God, born of God, doth not commit sin. That means he doesn't sit around and plan on sinning. Okay? He doesn't sit around and just plan and premeditatedly go about his day thinking up ways to sin, thinking up ways to hate his brother, thinking up ways to trip his brother up, or tri thinking of ways to frame somebody, okay, and to making them look like the bad guy. You know what I mean? When in fact, it's them that are the bad guy. See? Hallelujah. See, Sharon and I... My wife and I, we've, we've been ministering on YouTube a little over two years, two and a half years, and we've had a lot of people come against us, you know, and the Lord has taught us, don't defend yourself, okay? There was a time, like, when a certain individual made some really hateful videos about us, he said we were filled with the devil, and filled with Satan, and are, we're operating by the spirit of the devil, you know, and I made a ten part series about that person and and it was a truthful series. And I wasn't taking up for myself, but I made that series and um, the Lord knows what he's doing in all of it. But he's teaching me and Sharon more and more about how to humble ourselves and let him take care of it. See? Because we don't have to defend ourselves. He is our defense. Hallelujah. It says in the Psalms. And he will take care of it. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Whosoever is born of God did not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. I mean, he cannot sit around and meditate on how to sin, what to do, you know, uh, to sin and, and to transgress the law of God. See, we have to remember what sin is. It's, it's the transgression of the law of God. And the law of God is... Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. See, See if, if I steal something from a neighbor, that's not loving God. I'm breaking, the, I'm breaking the commandment. I don't love my neighbor if I'm stealing from him. Okay? You see? If I don't honor God and I take his name in vain, and I take his name lightly, and I hold his word up and I say, this is not the truth, you know, I mean, this is taking his name in vain. I'm breaking the commandments of God. You see? I'm not loving you if I did that. Okay, but if I if I tell you the truth, no matter how you treat me, no matter what you say to me, I speak the truth to you. Okay, then I'm being like him. I'm imitating him because that's what he does. He speaks the truth to the earth. He speaks the truth to people, and he tells them. Okay, you need to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, and it's all boils down to the self again. Where are you abiding? Where am I abiding? Are we abiding in heaven at the Father's right hand in Christ? Is that where our focus is? Or are we abiding on this earth with all the stuff going on on the earth? With the New World Order, all the stuff, and the bank accounts, and 
getting up food storages and setting up everything for the end times and, and thinking somehow we're just going to skate on through and everything's just going to go real good except you know they're going to nuke New York and they're going to nuke LA and they're going to nuke Washington DC and Seattle and Houston they're going to nuke all these big cities and, and everything where I'm at is just going to kind of skate along just fine you know see no but we are safe in him we're safe in Christ we're safe in the ark which is Jesus Christ and he's able to bring us through because when we're raptured not the rapture like Abalone Kid and other people believe okay and I love Abalone Kid so does my wife but we don't love a false teaching okay and we've made videos about the rapture you can look it up on our channel okay Ten, there's a ten part series on it alright it's, it's being raptured in the spirit okay and knowing that you're dwelling in Christ and no matter what happens around you it doesn't matter Jesus said don't be afraid of him who can kill the body but not destroy you know they can't touch the soul but be afraid of him who can destroy both body and soul in hell see so when we know the truth of the scripture it doesn't matter what goes on around us we're going to make it through because Christ is with us to give us grace to persevere to the end hallelujah hallelujah now verse 10 of chapter 3 in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God neither he that loveth not his brother now look at that you see what John you see the sin John's talking about here you see John is the Holy Spirit's zeroing in everybody's throwing out television uh, watching TV or smoking a cigarette or drinking a beer or you know uh, listening to a dirty joke or something like that or whatever okay people say all this stuff about what sin is and you hear it preached over and over again in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil so John is saying in the first part of verse 10 of chapter 3 there's a manifestation of the children of God and there's a manifestation of the children of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God okay so what is doing righteousness? He says, whoever does not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. See, he links them together. If you're not loving your brother, okay, if you have hatred in your heart for any one person, you're not doing righteousness. Okay? And at that moment, you're not walking with God. You're walking with the devil. You're walking just like the devil walked okay and you can be saved and walk like the devil walked okay but you're going to repent God's going to grab you and make you repent okay he's going to bring the circumstances in your life that you will repent because he has given you to the son and all whom the father has given into the son given into the son will come to him to the son okay and he will not lose anyone hallelujah he will not lose anyone for this is the message, verse 11, that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Here we go. See, John's speaking about this sin he's speaking about. <coughs> he's zeroing in on it. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. See, Cain's work was a work of pride and arrogance and selfishness. Okay? That, that's what his work was. And Abel's work was one of humility, humbling himself, and taking of, of that, that little sheep the most beautiful thing that he owned in his life, the most beautiful thing that he possessed, and he killed it. It was something living. And he killed it. And he cut its throat and he poured the blood out on the altar. Okay. But Cain's offering was the work of his hands. It was something he did with his hands. He hold he hold the cursed ground. You see, the ground was cursed. 